Okay, so if your current worked out well, you should have a nice brim attached and you should be able to detach it from the model. So you might have to clean up some of the sides of the model. My lid uh, got a little bent upwards here because it detached, so maybe using a wider brim would have been better. But otherwise it looks good. Uh, you can confirm that your two pieces fit together. So we're going to show all the parts that we need and how to put them together here. Um, so here from Amazon I ordered some things like uh, fuses. We're going to use one up for between the controller and the LEDs. And I ordered these Wemos D1 Minis. A pack of five or six of them. And they come with a bunch of different connectors that you could use to make your connections uh, for testing on a breadboard. Um, so we're going to use one of these and a, a power cable USB A that we have already. Um, and maybe every one and six of these might break because it might have a bad current regulator, I think, apparently. But so far, um, the ones that do work keep working. The fuses, I ordered a set of gen oh, sorry, resistors. I ordered a set of resistors here of many different ohms, 220 ohms today. Um, although there's a range between 220, I think, and 600 that you can use. And you can look up the how to map those numbers onto the quality of the resistor. So here's the 220. These are also 220s um, with the same two red marks. So we are going to use one of these for our LEDs. WS2812B, 100 and a meter. So every one is 10 millimeters a centimeter apart. These come with connectors and you might want to order some more connectors like I have that you can use to make your circuits easier. That you can use to solder on the power and the ground and the data line and connect them together. I've made these little Processions here that you can hide them in. Probably have to trim the edges a little bit. Here is the LED strip. It comes with a arrow showing the direction that you want to send the data and current. So we're going to start coming from the Wemos from this direction and send our data down the line. It doesn't have to connect to anywhere at the end the voltage and ground connect on each node. So we're going to cut it where we need it. And the data line is going to send each LED the signal that it needs by using these multiplexed signals. These additional wires that you might get on your LEDs are not necessary for our projects. They're for extending LED strips to longer distances and adding voltage along the way. I'm going to remove the shrink tubing. They are just soldered on. So I'm just going to cut off the tops of those so we just have our male connection and a strip of 100 LEDs. We're just going to use 36 LEDs of our strip and uh, you should be able to use the first one as well there. Uh, so you shouldn't, you can leave on the, the cables uh, if you like, or we can cut them off. Cutting one strip for one side like this, 16, 17, 18, which should give us the same length. We're going to make a little mark here, easiest way to measure. Notice how this cut we want to make it so that we continue to expose the leads on both sides. So we will try to cut it right on the line 
like this. I use these uh, 3D printing snips that are about the right length. Um, if you look at the back of these LED strips, if you strip away both the adhesive and the foam, you'll see connector pads on the back that you might want to use um, for your connections if you don't have room, for instance, in the six digit clock. So we're going to have these two strips. We're going to have to solder them together. You see the current goes this way. Then it is going to come back in this direction. You might want some extra wires. Get the... So we're going to have our soldering iron here with resistors that we need. Okay, so we're going to power our, our Wii mouse with a USB-A cable and it's going to connect into the box when we're done and also into the computer when we first flash the firmware. Then we're going to connect the pins on the Wii mouse here to the LED strip. 5 volt the ground and D2. D2 will be the data line and it's going to have this resistor in it and then the 5 volt on the ground are going to be the power. Connect the power cable into the AC adapter that gives about 1 to 2 amps of 5 volts and then we're going to connect the fuse into the D2. Red markings are facing the Wemos. It's going to be the way that the Wemos connects. We're going to connect this resistor to the green from D2 and then the red So probably easier if this is upside down. So this is going to go to green and then the red 5 volts is going to get and the ground is going to be the white and the resistor to the green. And then we're gonna go up and we're gonna also connect these LED strips with three wires or two connectors where we have the five volt to five volt, the ground to ground, and the data to data. Five volts is gonna be red, brown is white, and the data is gonna be green. And we will use say, one of those wires or two connectors. While you're testing, you may want to connect a set of pins to your Wemos like this, just soldering the whole back. And then you might want to get some connectors like these, where you could get a two by one connector and add your white and red cables and then a, maybe a single connector to add your green cable to and then you can hook them directly onto your Wemo board. Um, when you make these they come with the little pins which you crimp onto the edges of your wires um, but that is an option if you want to try with the breadboard because then you could, for example, then um, connect your Wemos and then hook it right onto your breadboard and do some development of it if you want to the buttons or lights or things like that. If you want to do the breadboard work, you might want to get a box like this of breadboard jumper wires to do those connectors, connections and test things. If you want nice looking wires and cables at the end without exposed metal, you might want to get some shrink tubing um, that you can use heat gun or a lighter to wrap around.
your electronics once they are connected and so Okay, so I think that's everything in terms of wiring. We're going to connect this to here with one set of solders and connectors, and then we're going to connect these two strips together. You'll need the WS2818B100 LEDs per meter, two strips of 18 LEDs, Wemos D1 Mini, 220 ohm resistor, wire for tools, soldering iron, one of these wire strippers, one of these snips, you'll need your 3D printer and your PLA, because I got screw holes built in to the back now here, find some screws that fit in there. These are metric threes, wide threaded. These smaller ones are gonna fit through as well. I'll try those. I only had two of these in my random screws of this size drawer. So we'll use those at the end to screw things together. The hanging picture holes fit even a large um, hanging nail. I've also made these holes at the back for ventilation, but they can also um, accept a strip of LEDs um, if you need as well. Maybe you want to illuminate the back of your clock. In that case, you might add another five or ten LEDs at the end of your chain. So I will put uh, four M3 screws one centimeter long. Oh, we'll also need some solder. You'll also need a USB-A charging cable. And then you'll need a AC adapter that outputs five volts and at least one amp. But this one's two, so it should be even better. And we'll connect with this cable to our laptop when we flash the firmware onto our Wemos the first time. But in the future, we can use uh, Wi-Fi to update the code if we need. That is 5 volts and 1 to 2 amps. So that should be your parts list. Plus solder. We'll probably use some masking tape to hold things down while we solder them. That should be everything we need. For the wire, I'm going to use um, parts of these connectors probably, but you could use just as well these kind of wire. And I've got my resistor right here. Visually, we got the LEDs, the Wemos, the wires, our connectors, so that should be everything we'll need. So one last time look at the wiring diagram. We got the USB A5 volt 1.2 amps. This is the output of the adapter. The 5 volt line, here we have the ground and D2, which is the data line. Then our LEDs have three contact points, and this one is 5 volts. This one's ground and data, and the data goes in that direction. And we're going to connect red to red, white to white, and the data to the green. We're going to also put in the middle of here a 220 ohm resistor. At the end of our data line, we have three pads. We're going to connect those to the corresponding three pads of the other strip. And we're going to put everything in the box. This is where the D1 is going to go, um, like this with the Wi-Fi up. The data lines are going to come off in this direction, so it's easiest for them to connect to the first strip right here, and then it will travel down and connect over here to the other strip. I go from the T1 out to 
connector that's going to go under it and then wrap around back here and then go to the next one.